the 36th President of the United States, Lyndon B. Johnson. From his desk, he commands the might of the most powerful nation this planet has ever seen. But you command him. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. My fellow Americans, I've been in this office for almost a year. Ever since that black and unforgettable day when America lost one of its greatest leaders, cut down in the fullness of his manhood and promise. I've drawn much of my strength in this task from loyal and dedicated public servants. Most of all, I've drawn strength from the warm support and understanding of all of the American people. I will always be grateful to all of you for that. I am now on a tour that will take me to every section of our country to discuss with you the important issues of this presidential campaign. Few presidential elections in our entire history have presented, as this one does, a basic choice that involves the fundamental principles of American life. We must decide whether we will move ahead by building on the solid structure created by forward-looking men of both parties over the past 30 years, or whether we will begin to tear down this structure and move in a radically different and, I believe, a deeply dangerous direction. Most of you listening to me have felt the steady progress of American prosperity in your own life and in the life of your family. Most of you, more than ever before, can look forward with confidence to a steadily improving life for your children. Our prosperity is not just good luck. It rests on basic beliefs which a generation of leaders has carefully woven into the fabric of American life. Our prosperity rests on the basic belief that the work of free individuals makes a nation, and it is the job of government to help them do the best they can. Our prosperity rests on the basic belief that our greatest resource is the health and skills and knowledge of our people. We have backed up this belief with public and private investment in education and training and many other programs. Our prosperity rests on the basic belief that older Americans, those who have fought our wars and built our nation, are entitled to live out their lives in dignity. We have backed up this belief for over 30 years now with the social security system supported by every president of both parties. Our prosperity rests on the basic belief that individual farmers and individual workers have a right to some government protection against those forces which might deprive them of a decent income from the fruits of their labors. We have backed up this belief with a system of fair collective bargaining. We have backed it with agricultural programs which have kept the farmer from suffering the neglect and the despair of only a few decades ago. Today, our whole approach to these problems seems to be under attack. We are now told that we, the people, acting through government, should withdraw from education, from public power, from agriculture, from urban renewal, from a host of other vital problems. We are now told that we should end Social Security as we know it, sell TVA, strip labor unions of many of their gains, and terminate all farm subsidies. We are told that their object of leadership is not to pass laws, but rather to repeal them. And these views have been supported by a consistent record 
of opposition to Congress to every progressive proposal of both parties, Democratic and Republican. Well, this is a radical departure from the historic and the basic current of American thought and American action. It would shatter the foundation on which our hopes for the future rest. Too many have worked too hard, too long, to let this happen now. I propose to build on the basic beliefs of the past, to innovate where necessary, to work to bring us closer to a growing abundance in which all Americans can seek to share. The choice is yours. For 20 years, our country has been the guardian of the gate of freedom. Our cause has been the cause of all mankind. The strength of that leadership has come from the fact that every president and the leaders of both parties have followed the same basic principles of foreign policy. They have built our strength so that today America is the greatest military power on earth. They have moved with courage and firmness to the defense of freedom. President Truman met communist aggression in Greece and Turkey. President Eisenhower met communist aggression in the Formosa Straits. President Kennedy met communist aggression in Cuba. And when our destroyer, destroyers were attacked, we met communist aggression in the waters around Vietnam. But each of these presidents has known that guns and rockets alone do not bring peace. Only men can bring peace. They have used our great power with restraint, never once taking a reckless risk which might plunge us into a large-scale war. They have patiently tried to build bridges of understanding between people and between nations. They have used all their efforts to settle disputes peacefully, working with the United Nations. They have never been afraid to sit down at the council table to work out agreements which might lessen the danger of war without increasing the danger to freedom. But today, these established policies are under the severest attack. We are told that we should consider using atomic weapons in Vietnam, even in Eastern Europe, should there be an uprising. We are told that we should break off relations with Russia, and with it, any hope of lasting agreement. We are urged to withdraw from the United Nations and to stop our help to other countries. We have heard the test ban treaty denounced. This is the treaty that has halted the radioactive poisoning of the air that we breathe. We are urged to threaten others with force if they don't do as we say. We are told, in effect, to withdraw into an armed camp with a few carefully selected friends and try to intimidate our adversaries into submission. Well, this kind of attack contradicts the entire course of America in our entire post-war period. If we should follow this course, if we should discard the tested policies of the last 20 years, the peace of the world will be in grave danger. I will not discard them. I will continue them. I will match firmness to strength. I will continue with all the skill at my command, the patient search for lasting peace. Here again, the choice is yours. I will discuss these issues in the next few weeks. They are among the most important questions 
ever presented to the American people in all of our history. It is you who will decide these questions, and you will decide them on November the 3rd in the quietness of your polling booths across this great nation. No person can afford to sit comfortably at home, confident that others will take care of the job. You must work and register and vote, for this is truly a turning point in the history of our great nation. At stake is all that we have so carefully built so long and all the hopes that rest upon it. I will do all that I can. I need your help. Then we can turn to our other work. Together, we will build the great society, a place where every one of us has the chance to seek happiness and fulfillment to the limit of his abilities. And we will work together to make this world a place where free men can live together in peace.